They broke my heart as a Raptor fan, but this video shows you why Joel Embiid and the Philadelphia 76ers deserve everyone's respect. Before they held the fully healthy number one seeded Heat to just 79 points in the second round, I attended all three Sixer road games when they played in T.O., chanting defense for my Raptors. While a lot of fans mocked Joel with the airplane and chanted FM Bead in game six, JoJo had shut my ass up way earlier in the series. Even as a Raptor fan and now watching the Sixers from afar, it was still inspirational from my perspective to watch Joel find a way to suit up despite battling concussion symptoms and a torn ligament in his shooting hand. He may have said he hated Raptor fans after Game 3 against Miami, and while a lot of them hate him, not all of them do. So regardless of whether or not they overcome this current 2-1 deficit, let's give Joel Embiid, James Harden, Tyrese Maxey, and these dangerous 2022 Sixers the credit they deserve. And what are my predictions for the rest of Miami versus Philly? Right before that, just 10.6% of you watching right now are subscribed. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. As much as it pains me to make today's video, considering I was cheering against them in the first round, Philadelphia, specifically Joel Embiid, exacted their revenge on my Raptors. Unfortunately, it did come at the cost of the MVP's health, as an inadvertent elbow from Pascal Siakam fractured Joel's right orbital bone, something Embiid predicted after Game 6, even before getting diagnosed with the injury. I think he broke my face. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah. I think he might have broken my face, but it's all good. It's the playoffs. Well, I when Embiid took that elbow to the face, the Sixers were ahead by 29 points in Game 6. There was 3.58 left in the fourth, so Doc Rivers should have probably subbed Joel out of the game. Regardless, the face of the Sixers franchise was forced to go into concussion protocol, and the Sixers would go on to lose games 1 and 2 on the road in South Beach by a combined 33 points. All reports initially signaled that Joel would still be missing for Game 3, but as Shams later tweeted, Joel was attempting to make one of the more impressive comeback efforts from an NBA player to return from injury in recent memory. Just think about the superstars nowadays who would have listened to every precaution and sat out for Game 3 when battling two significant injuries that could significantly hamper their production and reputation. Even though Joel only recorded 18 points on 5 for 12 shooting for playing 36 minutes in the first place and taking into account his rebounding and defensive impact, the masked superstar deserves a massive amount of credit for the Sixers bouncing back in convincing fashion. Doc Rivers spoke on Embiid after Game 3, saying, quote, Just his presence, obviously, to start the game, his energy, his rebounding, his ability at the basket. I've said it all year. You could see his timing was off a little bit, but his presence defensively, I don't think he gets enough credit for how good of a defensive player he is and how much he helps us, and I thought tonight, it was a lot of that. A few more players who deserve credit for Philly's Game 3 W are Danny Green and Tyrese Maxey, who combined for 42 points and 12 three-pointers, specifically the pressure and poise that the mere 21-year-old Maxey puts on the defense like he's done all playoffs long for Philly, made Miami's defense pick their poison. It's one of the most mind-boggling scouting failures in NBA history that 2020's NBA draft saw 20 general managers pass on this explosive, polished talent out of a top-notch program like Kentucky in Maxi. It's easy to forget, given his 22-point averages on shooting splits of over 50-40-90, that Tyrese is only in his sophomore NBA season. The breakout point guard's ability to bail out the Sixers at the back end of shot clocks with blow-bys past his matchup in space and fundamentally sound deep-range bombs makes this Sixer offense a different animal to game plan for. Opposing coaches are already wrapped up in trying to shut down James Harden and Joel Embiid, that they leave the kid who's barely got any playing experience in Tyrese just a tad bit of extra space. The potentially unsolvable conundrum for Sixer opponents is the fact that Maxi doesn't require too much open room to dominate, and if you don't specifically key in on stopping him, the youngin's not going to fold, as the sophomore's combination of skill and confidence is going to kill you. 
for a player with such little pro experience, with the pressure beaming down in the postseason, I've been extremely impressed with the Kentucky product's ability to manage the pace of the game. Whether it's properly slowing it down or speeding up the tempo, his consistent penetration with swift drive and kicks, or how he lets the game come to him and scores at the perfect times, even in the clutch, Maxi's well beyond his years. 13-year vet and champion with my Raptors and Danny Green spoke on Maxi's ability to show up in the biggest moments, saying it's what he's been doing all year, and he's not a kid that lacks confidence at all. We need him to continue to be that and continue to do that. He knows it's his show out there when James is not on the floor with Joe. Even when they are on the floor, we need him to be aggressive, end quote. James Harden gets way too much flack for not having attempted 20 shot attempts in a single game during his time in Philly. What that critique fails to take into account is that Harden's nicely settling into his role as Philly's lead playmaker, and Tyrese Maxey allows him to facilitate as much as he wants. It's a little early in his career to start labeling him as a closer down the stretch of games, but all throughout this season and playoffs for the Sixers, Tyrese has proved to be reliable at delivering when the Sixers need it most. While young players like Luka Doncic, Ja Morant, Tyler Hero, and Trey Young rightfully get their fair share of attention for being the next wave of basketball talent, you barely hear Tyrese Maxey's name brought up in a discussion regarding the NBA's most talented up-and-comers. Considering how productive and consistent he's been all year for Philadelphia, my hat's off to the Sixers' player development staff and coach Doc Rivers for putting the faith into this young kid. Of course, now they're seeing the results of that faith in the form of playoff Ws. After having a point guard who refused to shoot and quite literally couldn't throw a fish in the ocean, I can only imagine the breath of fresh air that Maxi's three-level scoring has been for fans in the city of brotherly love. In terms of the beard, James is the team's primary floor general with his saucy handle, with endless combos, his quick twitch step back moves, savvy foul drawing, and naturally gifted passing. While he's a three-time scoring champion, many forget Harden also won the assist title in 2016-17 and has averaged at the very least seven assists per game in eight separate seasons. Obviously, JoJo and Harden, or as I like to call them, and Beard, are the Sixers' primary one-two punch and main staples offensively, but when not only Maxi, but one of the league's most deadly small ball power forwards in J. Cole, aka Tobias Harris, get it going, from an opponent's perspective, at times Maxi and Harris morph into the scariest weapons to slow down. Because when those two find their flow, and you know you're going to get Harden's playmaking and Joe's inside presence on a nightly basis, that makes Philadelphia overwhelming to defend. What are your predictions for the rest of Philadelphia versus Miami? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Kent Saludo, who says, Yes, Curry and Dre are the most skilled duo. Appreciate every answer. DFlow signing off.